Hey everyone, welcome to ONTAP. My name's Chris, and today we're going to be talking about the first of our German breweries, Bex. Gehen wir! The Bex brewery originated in the north German port city of Bremen. Bremen actually has a very long tradition as both a center of mercantile exchange and also brewing, going well back into the Middle Ages. Starting in the 1200s, the city was actually a major port city where beer was one of the primary exports. And if you think about that, it makes perfect sense. If you're in the Middle Ages and you need to export your beer all around Europe, having a city on the coast is going to be much more advantageous than basing your brewery in a place like, say, Switzerland. Fast forward to the late 1800s and Mr. Heinrich Beck moved from Germany to the United States and then back to Germany where he decided to go into business with a couple of colleagues. In 1873, they opened up the Beck's Brewery, officially known as the Kaiserbrauerei Beck und May OHG, or Ohne Handelgesellschaft, which basically means general partnership in German. So the Imperial Beck and Company Brewery. But these days, that's pretty much just been shortened down to Brauerei Beck und May. Beck's was a major adopter, actually, of new technologies in the world of brewing. Uh, they were one of the first companies to introduce green bottles for their beer, as well as the metal keg, the metal beer can. And this replaced the earlier wooden kegs that we associate with you know, medieval fantasy movies and historical set pieces and anything from kind of the, you know, the old days. And they also instituted a new method of pouring beer, a sort of hygienic tap system, so that when you were pouring the beer, there was less of a risk of contamination, which was a big problem in the old days. So why all of these innovations? Well, because the Beck's company was exclusively focused originally as an export-only um, beer company, the beer that they made had to be able to survive sort of long voyages at sea historically, and metal kegs allowed the beer to stay fresher that much longer. You actually couldn't buy Beck's in Germany until 1949, after World War II. And though technically they did have sort of a partner company that sold beer in Germany, but anyway, I digress. Things were going fine for the company until well through the 1980s, and actually the company had a bit of an uptick in business once the Iron Curtain came down, and people now in East Germany and the ex-Soviet Union, who didn't exactly have access to the best quality beer, could now get their hands on some better quality West German stuff. But starting in the late 1990s, the company took a bit of a downturn, and the reason for this was, wait for it, decreasing consumption of beer in Germany, as a result of both population growth and younger people in Germany eschewing beer in favor of other drinks like spirits, wine, or just not drinking at all. But at the same time, Bex was also able to take advantage of the new wave of demand for, shall we say, better quality beer in the 90s that was taking place in the United States. And they were able to market themselves as a sort of prestige European brand, and that helped them grow sales in North America. The company was eventually acquired in 2002 by AB InVev, which you know, is, is what happens. Uh, but until that point, Bex was the fourth largest brewery in Germany. And as of right now, actually, the beer is produced in two major breweries, one in St. Louis, Missouri, and one still in Bremen. And of course, if you live in the US and you're drinking Bex, you're gonna be drinking beer brewed from that St. Louis plant. But if you're in Germany or sort of Europe in general, the Bex you're gonna be drinking is still manufactured in the original location, the brewery in Bremen. Even today, Bex remains the fourth largest brewer in Germany, and they still very much keep the tradition alive of being an export-focused firm. In 2015, the company produced around 2.1 million barrels of beer, US, which is solid business, and Bex is available in over 80 countries worldwide, including, of course, Germany and the United States. The beer is brewed in accordance with the Reinheitsgebot of 1516, or German Brewing Purity Law. Uh, basically what this law is, is a, a set of regulations on what can be put in beer, principally water, malt, and hops. And, well, technically yeast, once people figured out that yeast was something different from the malt. I'm simplifying a lot, but let's just leave it at that for now. The coat of arms of the city of Bremen, a white key upon a red shield, actually influenced the logo of the company, which is basically exactly that, just minus the crown that comes with the city logo. And if you actually want to see the greater city coat of arms, here's a picture. So while that's the official logo of the company, uh, starting in the 1980s, Bex has actually run something called the Bex Art Label Campaign. And what this is is a process whereby artists, often British, design cool, innovative, unique, avant-garde artwork that's featured on many of the Bex bottles. 
This actually started in 1987 when a couple of British artists in London, Gilbert and George, were sponsored by Bex and they did some label design. Bex liked some of the artwork that the artists were putting forward and the company started this campaign. This has actually continued on well into the 2010s, where now even certain musicians, often from the UK, are designing a lot of the images seen on the Bex logos. Here are some examples. Bex, like Heineken, styles itself as sort of a European lager that's associated with sports, coolness, youth, and partying. At least that's the sense that I get from the ads that I've seen, along with the unique label designs. Beck's principal variety of beer is, well, Beck's beer. This is a classic German Pilsner style lager. It's about 5% ABV, it's gonna have that classic malty beer flavor, and it's brewed in accordance with the Reinheitsgebot. So all it consists of is water, malt, hops, and yeast. There's also Beck's non-alcoholic, which is, yeah, unsurprisingly, a non-alcoholic beer. Don't know what else to tell you. Now, aside from those two principal varieties, Bex apparently makes a lot of other different types of beer outside of the US. This includes Irish Reds, English Pales, and fruit-flavored beers, such as Green Lemon and Chilled Orange. Yeah, I don't know if that's a Radler or Radler style beer, which is a German sort of beer and fruit-flavored mixed drink, but supposedly these mythical beers are unavailable in the United States for purchase. But viewers from around the world, can you find these beers in your stores? Let me know, I'd love to know. Well, everyone, it's been a long journey, but we're finally at the tasting portion. So let's get started. So first up, we have the Bex non-alcoholic. Now, if you remember from the, the Heineken episode, I, I tried a non-alcoholic beer there. Um, so let's see how this one compares to the, uh, compares to the Heineken. All right. I didn't really smell like anything. Um, so, oh, okay. So I'm getting a, a very strange flavor in this. It's, um, it, it's, there's this, this note underneath the regular, you know, beer flavor that I'd almost describe as like sour. Like it's, it, there's a bit of that beer malt, but there's like this sour flavor under that. Um, that's not something that I would describe as particularly pleasant, actually. Uh, I'm gonna take another taste of this because that's what that's what I do. But uh, yeah, no, I. It's it's very um, it's very off-putting. I would. I would describe it as off-putting. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, not off to a great start. Let's uh, let's go on and let's see if regular Bex can uh, hopefully improve things a little bit. Let's continue on here with uh, the Bex regular lager, and you can see it here. And we can we can actually see right the uh, the the abbreviated coat of arms of the city of Plemmen, the uh, white key on the red shield. Of course, the larger coat of arms. You've got that that crown on it as well. Uh, all right. So. Let's take a taste and let's see if we fare any better than with the, uh, the non-alcoholic beer. Yep. And that's a perfectly fine sort of basic four ingredients, water, malt, hops, yeast, uh, European table water. Um, perfectly, you know, acceptable. The, the notes are kind of all there, typical beer flavor. They're, they're obviously, they're very subdued. Uh, there might be a couple notes in there that are sort of different from just sort of the most absolutely generic beer you could imagine. Um, but the, you know, maybe something that's a little oaky or sharp, but these are, these are very, very subtle notes. Um, I'm gonna take another taste here and see. Yeah, I would say there's a, there's just a touch of sort of oakiness. You know, that sort of that flavor of beer that's been sitting in big wooden barrels for a long time. And I, you know, I'm, I'm sure that uh, this beer is not sitting in wooden barrels, I'm sure it's sitting in, in steel barrels. But nonetheless, there's there's kind of a little bit of that, that flavor worked in. So it's perfectly fine. It's a, you know, regular table lager and, you know, sort of in, in brewed in accordance with the Reinheitsgebot, right? It's just gonna have those four basic flavors, you know, malt, water, hops, and yeast. Um, and that's really what's, what's coming through from this. It's uh, you know, there's a bit of a malt flavor, but that's pretty subdued. 
Um, you know, it's, it's not gonna, you know, this beer is not gonna rock your world or knock your socks off or, you know, what have you. Mm. But it's perfectly fine. But wait, there's more. I figured that since we're comparing a non-alcoholic beer in a green bottle and a regular alcoholic beer in a green bottle, you know where else we've done that? The Heineken episode. So I thought, why not bring back a couple of guest stars from a previous episode, all the way back in season two. Yes, indeed, we will now be pitting the non-alcoholic Bex against the non-alcoholic Heineken and the regular Bex against the regular Heineken to see which one is better. Let's get to it. So first, the non-alcoholic Heineken, which I remember drinking and, uh, and in the scheme of things, quite, quite enjoying, given that it's non-alcoholic beer. So let's see. Yep, good of a good head on that one. All right. Yes, and that is, that is without a doubt in my mind, without question, 100% better by leaps and bounds than the Beck's non-alcoholic beer. This is, again, not a beer that particularly tastes like a whole lot. Uh, but first of all, it doesn't have an underlying strange sour flavor, which was kind of unpleasant. Uh, and it, you know, it doesn't have much flavor, but in the scheme of a non-alcoholic beer, it tastes fine. Um, as I said, it sort of, it has that beer body to it. It has that beer body to it and no sort of particularly offensive notes. All right, so now let's try the Heineken and see how that tastes compared to the Bex. Same color. All right, so we're really getting into the weeds here in terms of the different flavor profiles between a Heineken and a Bex. These are, these are both very similar beers. If, if I had to say, I, I think the Heineken is slightly maltier and the Bex is ever so slightly sharper and oakier. Um, but I might really have to do it, uh, honestly, a second taste test on both of these. So I'm gonna I'm gonna finish off the Heineken and then I'm gonna try the Bex one more time just to be sure that that's that's what it is. Okay, so that's the Heineken, and now the Bex. Just a little bit. Yeah, so the Bex, the Bex is oakier and it's sharper. There's a little bit more of a, there's a little bit more of a bite to it compared to the Heineken. Here's kind of how I would put it. So if you imagine like a spectrum of sort of malty to sharp, and we can imagine maybe four beers on that spectrum. We've got Sapporo, Bex, Heineken, and Stella. And on the side of most sort of malty, least sort of sharp, you've got something like a Stella, and then on the on the side of you know quite sharp, quite uh, defined notes in the beer you're drinking, you've got something like a Sapporo. Heineken and Bex are kind of in the middle. So it would go sort of like Sapporo, then you've got Bex, where it's not quite as sharp as a Sapporo, but it still has some, some notes there. Then you've got a Heineken, which is a little bit more malty, and then you've got a Stella, which is, you know, just very, very, um, you know, kind of, uh, it's very sort of generic uh, in sort of how it, how it tastes. So the Bex and the Heineken are both sort of here. So I wouldn't really say that either of them are really better than each other, but it's more just which flavor profile would you prefer. If you want something that's a little bit, you know, oakier and sharper, you'd want to go with the Bex. If you want something that's a little bit more malty, uh, you'd want to go with something like the Heineken. All right, so in conclusion, if we are just ranking the Bex beers, um, this is just completely passable, don't even bother. And then this is a completely acceptable, um, you know, easy to drink, mildly oaky, mildly sharp, um, lager. But if we're comparing them to the Heineken beers, I'm kind of move this in here. The Heineken Zero beer is, um, you know, really, as I've said, I've not drank a whole lot of non-alcoholic beers. This is 
Uh, these are really the only two non-alcoholic beers I've, I've really ever had. Um, but at least between the two of them, if I'm going with the Heineken Zero, like 100% between these two. And then in terms of the Bex and the Heineken, I'm putting them together because I don't think that either beer is particularly better than the other. They just have sort of slightly different flavor profiles. And I guess I, I, I'll put the Heineken slightly higher just because, if, you know, if you look at global sales numbers and sort of which of these two beers is just completely ubiquitous around the world, it's going to be the Heineken suggesting that that flavor profile of a beer that's more sort of, it's on the maltier side if it's a mild lager, that flavor profile just seems to be more popular with kind of global, global, uh, beer drinkers rather than the Bex, which again is still a mild table longer, but it's going to have that sort of a uh, little bit more of those sort of oaky sharp notes to it. But it's entirely up to sort of what you prefer. If you want, you know, a little bit more bite in your lager, go with a Bex. If you want something that's a little bit more sort of malty, smooth, nondescript, go with something like a Heineken. So anyway, um, yeah, that's my assessment. And uh, Bex versus Heineken. Both of these, we're gonna have a down the road, sometime down the road in the future, we're, we're gonna definitely have an episode on European lagers, European lager taste test. And uh, I will tell you that both of these will make it into the, the final round. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time.